Very good morning and a very warm welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mamani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is Mahashivratri. So, Lord bless us all. Enjoy your day off if you are having a day off. And uh, let's have an enlightening Mahashivratri. And uh, let's have a blissful one as well. And let's spread love and happiness around us. And uh, let's make this world a bit better place with this dear friends uh, study iq provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams at present up to 15 percent off uh, beg your pardon 50 percent not 15 50 percent off uh, is available on our pen drive and tablet courses and this is going to last till 15th february so you have two days to go so need more information check out studyiq.com with this we have many articles today uh, we will start our discussion with this one on climate change and then we have jalika to one this one is about west asia our recent means the recent visit of our prime minister to uh, this west asia and uh, this one is about trafficking you have uh, a small article on uh, nuclear arsenal as well and then you have this two editorial this one is about bangladesh we talked about this thing in detail yesterday so not taking this one on board and this one is about npa and the problems created by npas and how we should sort it out and things like that again i'm sure regular students you know that we have talked about this particular thing i think what 15 20 times now so for now i'm not going to take it on board and uh, there is one more article pertaining to same issue uh, when i say article I'm, I'm i'm talking about news item uh, in the business page of the hindu today it is talking about npa so you can club these two things together i'm sure these two items are going to be easy read for all of you so let's start with one of the most important article very very important and it is uh, in fact introducing all of us uh, with uh, uh, four uh, ways of uh, or four ways of uh, analyzing uh, this impact or the way things are implemented anyways uh, we know this thing i'm sure you know it as well and if you don't know then let me briefly give you this thing that the world is trying its level best uh, uh, under this paris agreement that uh, by 2100 right uh, before before the turn of this century we will try our level best to ensure that we don't cross this 1.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, when I say 1.5 degrees Celsius, we are talking about this average global temperature should not cross 1.5 degrees Celsius. We will try our level best, but it should definitely not cross 2 degrees Celsius, right? It should de definitely not cross this 2 degrees Celsius. Now, the thing is, if you go through many reports <clears throat> we find that uh, forget about 1.5 we will clock or we will touch three degrees celsius and with every one degree addition right the the pain or you can say the catastrophe that this thing can cause we cannot imagine right uh, but it, it's not that uh, this is just one degree we are talking i i said average global temperature so there could be some places where uh, the temperature could be as high as 5 degrees. So imagine a place like, say, for example, Rajasthan in summertime. You are normally, there are places where you find that 50 degree or 49 degrees is already there. And because of this climate change, if you, if there is an addition of 5 degree or, say, for example, 2 degree or five, 4 degree, then you cannot imagine uh, the, the destruction that this uh, increase of one or two or three or four degree can cause so this is going to be a very very one of the biggest problem uh, through which we are going at present there are so many things uh, taking place uh, uh, we are already witnessing this thing in terms of uh, our rainfall agriculture production and then we are going to uh, we are going to basically fa feel this this destruction that is taking place uh, will affect our survival because uh, you will have less food and then you have uh, more people chasing after food and then you see the way things are going on between say for example india and china the siang river right brahmaputra they are uh, diversifying i'm not saying whether the, we at present the government has not taken any stand but i'm just giving you a, one example right and it's not just i'm shying away from speaking truth what the thing is that i don't want to 
uh, spread something uh, uh, on which uh, the government of India has not taken any stand because uh, they are the ones if if they if the government of India has evidence that uh, yes China is doing this thing uh, then yes we can take a stand here so I hope uh, you understand what I'm trying to say here but anyways just imagine that uh, if China is uh, say for example uh, diversifying the water of uh, this uh, Brahmaputra river uh, then all our people in northeastern state predominantly in Assam and then you have uh, people in Bangladesh and later on uh, your uh, this Sundarbans and uh, your Bay of Bengal chemical properties of this water of Bay of Bengal so everything will get affected isn't it so this is this is how it works the ripple effects many a times we cannot see uh, the, this, uh, this uh, the final results but they are very very dangerous now uh, you have this uh, James Ford back in 2010 they did a survey and uh, they have gone through this James Ford and his colleagues uh, they have gone through 1700 rip, uh, projects and uh, their finding is that uh, all these adaptation projects uh, that uh, we are conducting at present they are in fact not creating positive change right uh, you see bits and pieces here and there but if you see or if you analyze uh, this vulnerable communities then we find that uh, this uh, adaptation projects are in fact uh, creating more troubles for them and you have this adaptation fund as well very important right uh, you can easily form MCQ from this thing adaptation fund it is an international fund which is managed by United Nations Climate Secretariat and uh, it helps in develop it basically helps developing countries with climate change adaptation right so this fund is provided and then technology and other things are provided so that this developing countries uh, the one ma there are many developing countries today they are they are severely affected by this uh, climate change thing so this fund helps them and we know, also know this thing that uh, it is this developed world they have started industrialization and uh, they are the ones who at present we are also emitting but it was started by this developed world so it is their responsibility and it is uh, their duty as well to provide technology as well as fund so that these developing countries who are generally speaking lacking this much amount of money and they don't have this uh, technological progress as well when you compare it with Germany UK USA France and other countries so we can uh, it's not only about European countries you can add Australia as well in it so they they have technology as well as money so they they should uh, contribute more yeah, so that other countries they if they are setting up electricity now so rather than starting with coal based power plants they can straight away start from solar uh, power plants and other things right so this is how it will work and then you have this uh, Benjamin uh, Sovo Kool and his uh, colleagues as well they studied uh, this adaptation projects and uh, very interestingly you have this four things that we can learn four main themes that we can learn from this Benjamin Sovo Kool and uh, his uh, colleagues uh, the thing is the first one is about enclosure I'm going to read this thing out because they are the most important thing that I find in today's newspaper very important for your understanding and you find questions on climate change and you will find in future as well because this is something that is uh, very big so you have enough material out there uh, but now the question is whose answer is the best one who can fetch the best mark when it comes to climate change so uh, pay attention to this one the first one is about enclosure which is when a private agents acquire public assets or expand their authority over them so if you have money or say for example a big company in our country India they will acquire a big piece of land and then they will become the supreme authority of uh, that land and they can extract as much as groundwater they like they can do whatever they like they will cut down trees and chop down trees and other things so this is the first thing this is like enclosure the second one is exclusion right exclusion stands for stakeholders means uh, let's take the same example uh, you are you purchased a piece of land that is uh, just a nearby forest area and now the things that you are doing whatever products or services you are producing uh, you are throwing some bits and you can say some sort of chemical right is being released in the environment uh, 
so you have other people as well they have rights uh, you are here for making money but uh, other stakeholders uh, it may be possible that uh, because of your uh, chemical the, the chemicals uh, that are released by your factories may be affecting the health of their uh, say for example cows and kettles isn't it uh, so who is going to be responsible for this thing so you have this exclusion thing as well because uh, many a times we find that stakeholders are not taken on board when it comes to decision making or when you are planning your strategy third one is encroachment uh, in which the adaptation actions undertaken during the project end up intervening in areas that are rich in biodiversity thereby interfering with ecosystem services and often resulting in an increase in greenhouse gases we have many examples of this encroachment and then you have this entrenchment where the condition of those who are already disempowered like uh, you have women poor people right to minorities and other vulnerable groups and uh, due to this entrenchment uh, their condition in fact becomes even more worse i hope these things are clear to you now you have very interesting examples here and uh, you can see some developing countries some undeveloped countries and some highly developed countries you have australia and norway then you have tanzania and uh, say for example bangladesh kenya burkina faso alaska these are different places around the world so we have a you can say a range or a very uh, good examples uh, very diverse examples we have here and see if you go through one example like let's take this Australian one right you can go through them uh, later on um, I have added this one for uh, for your understanding here so let's take this one say for example in Australia a desalinization plant was constructed by seizing valuable land from Bunurong abnormal community and turning it over to private actors a land on which this original community was relying on uh, this land was taken from them and this was sold to this private actors clear you can see this encroachment thing uh, encroachment thing taking place then you have this exclusion as well taking place here you have this enclosure taking place here and this entrenchment as well so if you go through other examples you will find this sort of things and in future whenever you read something going on in our country and i have a, a very good example today as well right so you can try to see uh, the things that you find in news or other things pertaining to this climate change uh, do try to see it uh, through the prism of this four main themes it will help you a lot in your understanding and you can use these examples in your main answer writing and these things will fetch you a good mark these examples you can use one or two it depends it, it again now this is totally a different subject it is about art and science of writing answers but uh, you can use these examples to add more weight and logic to your answer now politics and power struggles we know the things uh, right uh, very well the nexus that we have between uh, politicians uh, and big businesses and uh, the money that you get the money is also the way contracts are distributed and things like that and when you don't take this stakeholders on board what generally we find is uh, the big projects right uh, in fact the media as well will cover these big projects you will find them in the first page and in editorials and other things but the small projects uh, and and this vulnerable groups and their stories are not that extensively covered and if this is the thing uh, or if this is the world in which or if, if this is the way we are taking this climate change issue then um, it is it is going to be a very bleak uh, future for all of us uh, right uh, but, but the, the, those days are gone means say for example if there is a big hole in your ozone layer then this ultraviolet rays they won't uh, discriminate between who is rich and who is poor right uh, they will in fact uh, create cancers in everyone in the same way if we are losing our bird species if we are losing our flora and fauna then uh, of course for time being uh, people having money with them they can survive a bit for a bit of extra period of time but uh, at the end of the day they are also going to be trapped in this uh, vicious cycle because uh, you can purchase some extra food by paying extra money but when you don't have any you can say if, if uh, poor people are dying 
right then you won't have any market uh, for your products and services so uh, we are living in an ecosystem we are every one of us uh, right is interdependent on each other from small microorganism to a big blue whale everyone is connected with each other the only sad thing is that we are not able to see this a string that is uh, or this string that is connecting all of us or knotting all of us together so uh, we have to change the way things are going on and i am adding bit a bit of my own uh, you can say analysis here and uh, uh, a thing that makes me sad is uh, we find people taking protest right or they are coming onto street and uh, sadly they are being violent as well on many different issues right uh, uh, again protest if you want to protest this thing is allowed as far as you are not uh, doing something or if you are not taking law in your own hand uh, you can protest in a democracy but uh, we don't find this sort of topics right climate change and the misuse of water nowadays you might have heard about i i, I was quite disturbed when i saw this thing that uh, I, I i have observed this thing that many people now they are in fact uh, this they are using this uh, water filter right water filter not for drinking purpose but uh, they are uh, using it they are keeping this in planting this thing in their terrace and then they filter all the water and then you know it very well that uh, whatever water you filter then the rest of it will be considered as a waste though it is fit for domestic use this will be thrown into gutter and they are using this uh, filter water for taking showers and things like that so clear violation right you have extra money but uh, this groundwater belongs to every one of us isn't it so there are many things that you can talk about it and uh, the government as well uh, th should take a sort of clear stand on this thing they should take tribals and vulnerable groups on board when they are making decisions ias and secretaries right uh, they are not you can say masters in everything right they 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 may be heading environment ministry but that does not mean that uh, they are the best for that particular thing you have experts you have professors you have experts and you have uh, grassroots level people as well who face uh, these challenges on regular basis so without uh, taking stakeholders on board we are not going to find any sort of solutions with this dear friends uh, this one is about expanding horizon now uh, we have talked about this act east policy it is about asean and uh, eastern part or eastern asia and here you have this look west policy it is about west asia this is the portion that we are talking about now you know it very well this portion here couple of things right uh, you have uh, Indian workers working in this part here right so Indian diaspora the second thing is that uh, oil and energy uh, third thing I can say is a big market uh, we have a uh, close tie up uh, historical ties uh, between India and this Arab world and uh, this is uh, the you can say fifth visit to West Asia in last three years of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and this indicates that we the the area that was earlier on bit ignored or was not on our table or was not our priority now it is our priority and we are trying our level best to engage with uh, this uh, West Asian countries and things are going on quite well as well I must add here that India is uh, respected uh, in West Asia right uh, all the countries all across the board we have good relationship with Iran we have good relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel and other countries too so India is uh, considered as a very pe peaceful and you can say uh, most of the times uh, you hear good things about India and Indian people as well in West Asia now uh, Palestine uh, you know you, we talked about this thing and I am just going to briefly explain you that uh, now the, the way things or, or the way India is handling things going on in Palestine and Israel uh, we have in fact uh, dehyphenated uh, this relation we are not seeing Palestine uh, through the prism of uh, Israel and vice versa right uh, so we are independent in this way and uh, both this arch rivals uh, Palestine and Israel they are happy uh, 
uh, that India is developing relationship with at the same time simultaneous relationship between both these arch rivals. Trade and economic ties are becoming central uh, to the India UAE relationship with Palestine. We have talked about uh, this Palestine thing in detail. So U India and UAE. Now here is UAE. Right, uh, this is UAE, a small country here. I provided you a map as well, and you know that uh, UAE is a very rich country. Uh, oil was uh, its main, you can say, export item, uh, apart from dates and other things. But now, UAE has clearly stated that it does not want to see itself uh, just as an oil exporting country because they know it very well that uh, there will be a time when they will run out of this oil. So, for a long term future, now they are investing heavily in their human resources and they see, see India as a very, you can say, um, a partner that can help in expanding their uh, human resources or uh, you can say training their human resources. Uh, if you have some relatives or if you have been here, then you will find that uh, doctors in Dubai and doctors in other you know, these uh, countries um, of West Asia you find doctors from India and in fact uh, in many universities you will find uh, students from this part of the world they are coming to India because when they go to USA or UK of course we know it is more expensive and they can get good quality of education even from Africa as well so in this way we have a very close connection with them uh, with this uh, very interesting thing has taken place and this is about uh, storage of oil here we are talking with this uh, western uh, west asia world that we are in fact going to store oil for this uh, uh, uae and uh, their oil exploration earlier on we used to be uh, the relationship was more about indian oil companies and theirs right it was about buyer seller relation but now we are uh, going to have 10 percent stake in their offshore oil concession so uh, a good thing for India, right? Energy security, in, in terms of energy security, this is a good thing. The second thing is we are going to store oil in our country, strategic oil storage. So just in case if we need a little bit of oil, then we can take it out from it. And uh, then you have flexible terms and conditions. So say for example, you take 10 liter out of that uh, reserve. So here the 10 liter that was going to come to you will be deducted. So this sort of adjustments will be made and this is possible when you trust each other. The second thing is that uh, MOU is also signed in contractual employment and uh, terrorism is a thing that was discussed between India and UAE. Uh, they are worried about this China's uh, expanding footprint uh, in Indian Ocean region. You know this string of pearls and dual purpose uh, naval ports uh, that China is building. We know the recent case of this Maldives um, uh, going on at present, this issue of Maldives going on at present. and. Uh, in terms of uh, tourism, you know Dubai, right? Saru Khan is at present a brand ambassador of this uh, Dubai and it is a very beautiful place though I have never been there, hopefully in future. But uh, I've seen photos and videos and other things and you know it very well. It is a pure, pure uh, world, true, truly a global city. Uh, and uh, together we are going to use this space as well for peaceful purpose. In health sector, we have already, I have thrown some light on this health sector too. Right, uh, this one is uh, Prime Minister visiting this uh, Sultan uh, Kabu's Grand Mosque in Muscat, Oman. And uh, here Prime Minister is having discussion with the Sultan of uh, Oman and uh, many MOUs have been signed and agreements. Uh, we have many agreements on tourism and other things as well, outer space and other sort of items. So please help yourself and go through it. Now uh, let's uh, move on to this Jalikatu issue. Jalikatu is a, 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 you can say, a festival. You celebrate it uh, during this uh, Pongal. It is basically part of this Pongal festival celebration. And uh, this is a, a sort of celebration or festival associated with Tamil Nadu, right? Uh, now, the thing is, uh, Supreme Court has clearly in this there is a there was a case called this uh, Nagraj case uh, of 2014 and in this Nagraj case the Supreme Court uh, declared this Jalikatu illegal right uh, and the biggest issue or the biggest uh, means uh, a stand taken by Supreme Court on this thing was about animal welfare Supreme Court said that uh, you don't have any right uh, to 
create or induce pain on uh, animals uh, so this was the stand of uh, this uh, supreme court and later on what we find is tamil nadu um, the government of tamil nadu they amended this prevention of cruelty to animals act 1960 pca act and uh, they exempted this uh, jallikattu from this prevention of uh, they considered or basically declared that this is uh, part of the culture of tamil nadu and uh, it is not creating pain and it's fine it is because it is associated with uh, their culture so this thing does not uh, or it should be exempted now the thing is if you go through this whole structure or how it works right back in 1960s uh, the union government brought this pca act prevention of uh, cruelty uh, on animal act and uh, this thing falls under this concurrent list you have three list in your constitution uh, one is a union list uh, now all the items given in this union list uh, can be amended or changes can be made by central government only then you have this state list only state governments can make uh, changes in it and then you have this concurrent list uh, equally right uh, state as well state possesses an equal authority though if uh, one topic if say for example if there is a clash of view between union and state then of course the union's view will be taken on board or union will have an upper hand if the issue is pertaining to one particular topic or one uh, if they are against each other or their opinions are not matching on one topic so it would be union that would be having an upper hand so because uh, this pca or animal welfare thing is uh, falling in this uh, seventh schedule of the constitution it falls under this concurrent list so state governments they can make changes to it and this is what tamil nadu has done by amending this act so now uh, there were multiple petitions filed in supreme court uh, because you have this animal rights group they are not happy about this uh, jalika to celebration going on and they have filed cases in supreme court and now supreme court on uh, february the second february supreme court uh, clubbed all these uh, different cases together and uh, it is going to be looked after by a constitution bench so there are many things that will be checked by this constitution bench see uh, on one side as i told you supreme court declared this thing illegal but then you have this amendments uh, been done by this tamil nadu uh, government and then you have uh, people protesting against it and things like that so the thing is uh, it is not going to be that easy right supreme court uh, because you have this article 21 as well and article 14 your right of li right to life and right to live with dignity and other things are also associated with uh, or has been said earlier on pertaining to this thing and then there is a question of whether we should consider an animals as well um, do they have right to life uh, because earlier on this different entities like organizations and other departments and firms uh, they are also many a times taken as individuals uh, so their rights are protected too so in this way now the question is you know the rivers as well they are considered as entities living entities so uh, now uh, we have to wait and watch whether supreme court is declaring this animals as well or whether this article 14 and 21 they are applicable to animals or not we have to wait and watch but one thing is that um whatever stand will be taken by supreme court it is going to be very tricky because uh, you have this article 51 uh, that is talking about this is about uh, fundamental duties talking about protecting animals and things like that uh, so they are not enforceable uh, this fundamental duties they are there it is uh, trusted that people will follow it and then you have this article 21 this is a part of our fundamental right so supreme court uh, should keep this thing in mind that it is not uh, converting this uh, fundamental duty or any particular duty or duties uh, they are not uh, converting them into a sort of enforceable thing uh, so let's uh, wait and watch uh, let's see how things will turn up and uh, one more thing that uh, Tamil Nadu government uh, uh, their stand is that uh, it is about their culture first thing is uh, about their culture and the second thing is about the breed they are saying that uh, by celebrating this festival they can save the indigenous breed of bulls uh, this one is about rethinking trafficking now uh, 
first of all mcq item for you guys here release of a report called global estimates of modern slavery forced labor and forced marriages this report is prepared by international label organization walk free foundation and international organization for migration now if you go through the reports you find that 40.3 million modern slaves are there in today's world then you can break it down 40 24.9 are forced labors and 15.4 are forced marriages and things like that now niti ayog uh, particularly bibek debroy is not happy about this report because uh, this report is not naming any particular country but we know it very well it is talking about uh, this portion or chunk of people or this big chunk is here 60 percent you find the slaves living in asia and of course india is indirectly referred here so uh, bibek debroy or niti ayog is saying that uh, you should not follow uh, reports uh, coming from this organization uh, niti ayog will come out or the government of india will come out with its own report and uh, you should follow this report and things like that now the thing is that uh, sustainable development goals a couple of days ago we were talking about this thing we have 17 sdgs isn't it and if you see the 8.7 it is about eradicate it is about eradicate uh, forced labor and modern slavery and human trafficking and end child labor by 2025 and uh, in India, it is Niti Ayog. Uh, this is the body that is entrusted with the task of overseeing implementation of this SDGs. Uh, but when uh, you have uh, problems with the reports coming out, then this is going to raise many questions, isn't it? The other thing is that, uh, see, what we have lost is if we go back in the 70s and 80s, then we find that countries like India and Brazil, we developed a very rich and indigenous uh, jurisprudence or laws against this exploitation of um, child labor and forced marriages and child marriages and other things uh, but the latest one this latest bill of our country indian government is about neo uh, abolitionism basically we are talking about big figures and things like that but when it comes to implementation we don't find any clarity in this bills and uh, if you go through the reports of experts then things that we can say that are common sense things right uh, uh, you can see here right uh, these are the takes of experts they are saying that uh, improved labor inspection very simple to understand isn't it that uh, different say for example restaurants you find in different restaurants and this uh, tea stores you find uh, small kids working so what are these government uh, labor inspectors doing right uh, 50 100 500 1000 rupees throw it in their pocket and uh, they are turning their eyes or they are closing their eyes if this is the scenario that is going on then we are never going to change uh, these things right uh, villages the policeman will be knowing who is selling illegal uh, ganjas and your alcohol and other things in restricted areas but uh, how strange it is that uh, policemen would not be knowing about if there is any sort of child marriage taking place in a very remote area so there are this sort of nexus right this sort of uh, soft uh, you can say corner provided to some people or some community or in different parts this sort of things have to change only then we would be able to get rid of this trafficking that is taking place we know very well right uh, this sort of areas are quite famous in all cities and towns uh, everyone would be knowing where you have brothels and prostitutes or red light area uh, you find that uh, most of the prostitutes uh, they are very young they are in fact uh, they are they are minors and uh, it is clear right clearly uh, the authorities are aware about this thing but uh, when it comes to implementation so there should be strict laws and strict implementation this is about nukes very briefly the th way things are being handled by trump administration right uh, the way the superpowers you can say china russia and usa um, one of the most if i'm allowed to use destructive methods uh, they are applying see they want to create more nuclear weapons this new pentagon's 2018 nuclear posture review i don't know on whom they are going to use this uh, nuclear weapons they have enough weapons in fact russia and this usa together they have somewhere around 90 percent or something weapons if i if if these figures are not uh, wrong or if i'm if i'm not confusing this with other figures the maximum nuclear weapons are held by these two countries and now they are they want to upgrade it and make it up to the mark and latest one so 
And same way you have China and uh, the excuse that is provided is that uh, if you don't have good defense, uh, then people or other countries will abuse you. But see yourself, you already have all these weapons uh, that you can have. So there is no point of upgrading it. So this is a very sad thing, or very greedy world in which we are living. This is the most important uh, news item that we have. It is about Chief Justice of India. right? Uh, he has asked a very important question. And the question is that at one point of time we are talking about cleaning politics, isn't it? We, need, uh, we don't need criminals. We need good people uh, in politics. We need a non-criminal isn't it? Uh, people, normal people like you and I are taking part in politics uh, and uh, we find, we know it very well, criminalization of politics is not something new to us and we also find that uh, criminals, right, uh, they cannot, now we have rules and regulations so they cannot take part in elections but they have their uh, associates, uh, they have their deputies, they have their own strongmen, right, uh, they will uh, field them and uh, indirectly they are the ones who are ruling it. So Supreme Court has said that how can you have this sort of criminals? Uh, you They cannot take part in election but they should be barred from or are we able to see a clean uh, sort of political system in our country if we allow these criminals to head political parties? So this is a very important topic and I believe we will find editorials and articles on this thing and you find questions on this thing as well. Very briefly, now we are literally running out of time, so I will introduce you to important news items. Here is Russia it has seeked 125 crore to repair this INS chakra. Go through this one. This one is about industrial activity. Inflation is at 5.7. So at present, we won't see rates of repo rate coming down for time being. But the good news is that manufacturing and production, in fact, of industrial products has gone up 7.07%, which is not bad. Kingfisher is having facing troubles in UK. They have lost a case. And Nasheed's claim, Nasheed is uh, the Maldivian a former president, uh, whatever he said regarding China. China has rejected this thing. And uh, we have seen this China... India and Maldives, uh, you can say, thing going on. This is about uh, Prime Minister praying at 125-year-old temple in Oman and uh, North Korea and uh, South Korea. They are going to have discussion and USA has also indicated that it is ready to discuss uh, things with it. Uh, industrial policy should promote, create jobs. Uh, this is been said by Suresh Prabhu and uh, this is the one that I was talking about. Now, do try to see this item with that four themes, right? Uh, we see this sort of reports and we are more than happy to use this sort of figures as well. But the reality is that there may be a marginal increase in forest cover, right? But what about the quality of forest? This is a quantity, a quantitative increase. What about the qualitative increase. So these are the things that uh, most of the time are not uh, reported by medias as well. Uh, you have your answers here. Now very fresh and a new question and this will be a good geographical work for all of you. So go through cartographic work in fact, right? So go through your uh, maps, use your atlas and uh, try to answer this question. And I will see you all soon. Enjoy your studies. Jai Hind!